All right, so in the last video, we talked about competitive strategy, and we talked about specifically the four competitive strategies that are out there in terms of cost versus differentiation and industry-wide versus focus. And now what we're going to do is we're going to implement that competitive strategy in the form of a value chain or multiple value chains. Michael Porter defines value as the amount of money a customer is willing to pay for some product or service. Now, the margin, the money that you're actually going to be making off of a customer is the difference between the value of all of your activities and the cost of those activities. So the money that you're making from the customer and the cost that it's costing you to actually produce everything that you're needing. And every individual activity that you're taking in order to produce your product or service, every individual step, every individual activity is going to have its own associated value and its own associated cost. It contributes a certain amount of value to your overall value and it contributes a certain amount of cost to the overall cost. A value chain is a network of value creating activities. That chain is actually going to be the chain of activities from the very beginning where you're actually, you know, getting everything that you need in order to create your product to the very end where you're actually selling your product and delivering that product to your customers. Now, any value chain is going to consist of two types of activities. There's the primary activities, which relate directly to the production of products and services. And there's the support activities, which assist and facilitate the primary activities. And Michael Porter actually identifies five different primary activities and four different support activities. So let's take a look at those. In any business, you are always going to have five primary activities. Those activities are going to be inbound logistics. So everything that you do in order to receive, store, and disseminate inputs to the product. Those inputs are going to be things like materials or data or stuff like that. Essentially what you're taking in in order to start creating your product or service. Then there's the operations and manufacturing, which are all about transforming those inputs into the final product. And we'll actually go through an example that involves each of these primary activities in just a little bit. There's the outbound logistics, which are all about collecting, storing, and actually distributing the product to buyers. So once you actually create a product, how do you store it until it's ready to be shipped? How do you actually prepare it for shipping? And then how do you actually get it shipped out to your customers? There's the sales and marketing. Those induce the buyers to purchase the product and provides a mean for them to provide a means for them to do so. So that'll be the advertising, that'll be your website or your listings on other websites. Maybe your listings on Amazon or eBay or some other kind of marketplace. And then you have the customer service. So once a product, a com once a product is actually in the hands of a customer, you want to make sure that the customer is able to use that product. Uh, you're going to therefore maintain and enhance that product's value by continuing to give the customer support. Now, those primary activities can't actually operate all by themselves. For example, you have all this uh, inbound logistics that talk about receiving all of your inputs, but then how do you find vendors and set up contracts in order to get those inputs? How do you get the materials that you need in order to produce your product, for example? How do you design your products? How do you actually know what you're supposed to be manufacturing if you don't have that design ready to go? How do you hire and support your employees? Your employees are actually what creates the value in your product because you know you have to actually go from receiving your inputs to actually having the product ready to go. Otherwise, customers would just buy the inputs and manufacture the product themselves. So you need employees in order to actually do that transformation. And then how do you manage the company resources? How do you manage your equipment, your budgets, your money, your storage areas, all of that kind of stuff. 
all of these are still really important. They just don't directly relate to the creation of a product. Well, each of these questions can actually be answered by the four supporting activities that Porter uh, identified. So procurement is the supporting activity that manages finding vendors and setting up contracts. The technology answers how you design your products. Human resources focuses on hiring and supporting employees and firm infrastructure helps in the management of company resources. So each of these supporting activities, though they don't directly contribute to the production of products, are still very necessary because without them, you still wouldn't be able to produce your products or your services. So here is an example value chain for a drone production company. It's a company that produces drones that photographers can use to get scenic shots or all that kind of stuff. And we have the primary activities in purple at the top of this chain. And you'll see that these primary activities lead one directly into the other. Support activities are on the bottom of this chain. They are orange and they don't necessarily have that lead one directly into the other because they they kind of appear at different areas of the chain. For example, hiring and supporting employees is super relevant for every single one of these primary activities. So they don't necessarily fit into a direct chain like the primary activities do. But we have an example of each of the primary activities here. So. Inbound logistics is going to be about acquiring those drone parts. You are bringing them into your warehouse. You're storing them in some certain place until they're ready to be produced. And then when you're actually getting into production, you know, that's going to be building the drone. Uh, you ship the drones. That is outbound logistics. Uh, sales and marketing is, well, sales and marketing of your drones. That's going to be actually creating the advertisements, maybe doing paid campaigns with uh, influencers, all that kind of stuff. And then servicing the customers uh, in the customer service primary activity. Servicing the customers would be something like uh, shipping replacement parts or making sure that whatever software is working correctly for the customer, all that kind of stuff. And then at the bottom, we have all the supporting activities that help with the production of the drone. So when you're managing the supplier relationships, you're, you're working on the procurement part of the, um, the procurement support activity because you're making sure that you'll be able to continue getting parts at the best cost possible. When you're investigating new designs, that's going to affect producing the drones because when you make a better design, you're going to be changing your drone production. Uh, hiring and supporting employees, like I said, helps with all the primary activities. Managing company resources is going to be everything from the production line equipment to managing inventory spaces, managing the inventory of the drone parts, managing the inventory of the actual completed drones before they're shipped and so on and so forth. And as you can see in this diagram, every single one of these activities has its own margin. Uh, when you acquire the drone parts, those parts are going to have their own value based on the quality of those parts and the number of parts that you have, but it costs you a certain amount of money in order to acquire those parts. So you want to balance the value that you'll get by using certain parts in your drone against the cost that it well, costs you in order to actually obtain those parts for your drone. Every single activity has a margin, and those margins add up to create a total margin for the primary activities and a total margin for the support activities, which then add up together to give you the total margin of your entire value chain. And that total margin is going to give you how much value your value chain has. And that is essentially determining how successful your business is. Now, a value chain can have linkages. So let's actually go back to this drone example again. Um, let's say that you are taking the data 
that you have when you're marketing and selling the drones. You're taking a look at how many of each type of drone that you produce are being sold. If you can then use that data and try to use trends in that data, you know, maybe certain amounts of drones are being sold in response to certain events or they're being sold more at certain times of the year or something like that. If you can then create a forecast as to how many drones you can expect to sell at a certain time, maybe what that means is that you only need to order a certain amount of parts if you're expecting a low number of sales and then you can order more parts at times when you expect a higher amount of sales and what you're doing is you're only selling you're only ordering as much as you think you'll need to sell and that can save you money in terms of how many parts that you're ordering but also it helps prevent you from ordering too many parts and then having a bunch of stuff sitting around in inventory and that can be even better because then if you have a bunch of stuff you know sitting around in inventory and then you make a new drone design that means you don't need to use those parts anymore while well, you've wasted a whole bunch of money right so if you can effectively use this forecast to determine okay i'm expecting to only sell x amount of drones at this time so i will only buy the amount of parts i need to build x amount of drones this is what we call a linkage between in this case between sales and marketing and inbound logistics and operations manufacturing. What we're doing is we're linking the marketing activity with the acquiring drone parts and producing drones activity. So we're linking those parts together in the chain. And these linkages are really important because they allow us to help streamline what we're doing. They help us streamline our operation. And we'll talk a little bit more about that when we talk about business processes. But you might be able to start to see where information systems are kind of getting involved here. We're building a forecast based on marketing data. That in and of itself is an information system. The thing that takes marketing data and builds forecasts out of it that we then use to figure out how many parts we're going to apply. So in that linkage is a place where we can possibly start thinking about information systems, but we'll talk more about that in a little bit once we talk about the business processes. Anyway, that is the discussion of the value chain. We're going to actually use the value chain in order to motivate further discussion about our actual business, the ways that we go about making business. But the concluding thought that I want to leave you with here is that the value chain represents what we are doing as a business. It represents the process that we are doing to make money.